Hey guys, welcome back to another video in a Spring Boot series. So until now we have two endpoints, a get endpoint for videos and a post endpoint for videos. Uh, these two endpoints are good and working but they are not secured. So what will happen eventually that when you are going to deploy your service to AWS or GCP or Azure, um, you going to, anyone can hit your service, you know, with the get videos and post videos endpoint because they are they are public we haven't done anything to secure them and we don't want that right we don't want our API to be exposed and you know because if they are exposed anyone can do a post request and you know kind of contaminate your data so let's let's secure them and it's very very easy just like uh, you know enabling swagger uh, Spring Boot has a security plugin. Now let's add a dependency for Spring Security, uh, which is which will enable the you know the uh, security for us. So let's add a library dependency for that, and it's called I think Spring Boot Starter, and then we'll say security at the end, and it's obviously coming from. Sp spring boot and that's good I'm going to click the auto import thing so it's going to you know pick up all the changes thing it happened all well and good uh, now now let's just let's just run that I think this plugin is is uh, so smart it's going to figure out that it's going to generate a password and username for and we'll see how it works out right so let's rerun our application and let's pay attention to the terminal very closely and uh, now it's coming up and we can see here we go that's what I wanted to show it's saying using generated security password for its these whatever the password is right we don't worry about that so let's head to postman and see what happens when we do a get request on a videos endpoint and when we do that it says 401 unauthorized you can see at the bottom right and the reason it's saying that because now we have uh, we have secured that endpoint so how should we talk to that endpoint right so let's go to authorization tab and in the authorization from this drop down let's select basic auth basic auth will bring username and password uh, the default username is user and the password is you know let's copy this entire thing that is spring security generated for us and we'll paste that guy in up here as it is and I'll do send again and you can see 200 okay obviously nothing came back because we haven't you know put so this is good because now we have an endpoint which is secured by a username and an auto generated password right but but the problem with that approach is that the password is going to change every time you start your service and we don't want that right we don't want to keep copy pasting the auto generated um, password right so let's make that static and it's again very simple to do that we'll go to uh, application properties uh, you can find that in source main resources and here we will um, enter two uh, key value pair uh, just like we have above so we'll say spring dot security and we'll say username and we can supply any string just for simplicity I'm saying user similarly we want a password field right and we'll say password and we can type any string but again for simplicity I'm saying password is my password and that's it right we define we have two configuration spring security username and a spring security password which is going to be password for us so let's restart our server well just let's start our server and uh, we'll see it doesn't generate a password this time that's a good sign because now we can use a, let, let's try with this old password and let's see what happens right it says 401 unauthorized right because we this is not our password now our password is literally the string password right and user is user and when we do that you can see 200 okay so our request went well right so now you can again restart the server you don't need to change username and password you can still keep using the same one again over and over 
I won't recommend using those simple username and password you can you know use a more secure one but just for the simplicity we use this for now so that's it for this video where we talked about spring security and how can we you know secure our API endpoints stay tuned for more videos in spring boot series thank you guys